In this video, I'm going to go over whether I think the drawbacks I spoke about in my initial review. Straight out of the box, this one did not fly well. It's not fun to fly with a GoPro on top. Do random nose diving and tumbling. No power in this drone whatsoever. So loud. My gosh. Everyone in the park can hear to it. To be honest, it's not the most enjoyable to fly. I'm still as irritating as they were when I first started using the Avata. Yo, 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 happy new year guys. So yeah, it's been about seven or eight months since I've had this drone, the DJI Avata, and I just wanted to do an update video for you guys just so I can let you know about the stuff that I like about it, that I don't so much like about it in that time that I've been flying it. And I'm gonna start off with the first point, which is probably the most controversial part of my initial review, which is flight performance when holding a GoPro. Okay, so I got quite a few hater boy comments whilst talking about this. They hate us because they ain't it. Basically people saying it's not designed to hold a GoPro, so why would I expect it to fly well with a GoPro on top? Well, to put it short, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting it to fly well with a GoPro on top, but I am hopeful and I was hoping to be pleasantly surprised. And I was also just simply passing on the message through my review video to others who may have also hoped to fly with a GoPro on top. I still think the Vata doesn't fly very well with a naked 80 grams GoPro on top as it just makes the drone much noisier and more sluggish than it already is. But having said that, I have done it for some client jobs and it gets the job done. However, when I'm just flying for a hobby, just for fun, on trips, whatever, that GoPro comes straight off and I'm just flying with the DJI O3 camera which as you've seen from the footage is a decent camera, but in my opinion, it's just a bit too contrasty compared to a GoPro. So for me, um, I'm hoping that they approve this in the next version, the 04 Air unit, or maybe even a firmware update in the future to just reduce that contrast in the image a bit more. The your tumble issue. Probably one thing you're very interested in knowing is the tumble issue when yawing very suddenly. Well, I don't know if they fixed this in a firmware update, but I really have not had any problems with it as I did in the beginning. And even when I try and do some light freestyle with it, I haven't actually experienced that your tumble issue for quite a few months, to be honest. So that is definitely a huge positive. I don't know if it's just me getting lucky as I'm flying and also I'm not flying that aggressively. But yeah, even when I'm trying to make it tumble through a fast your movement um, doesn't seem to be happening. So maybe they have fixed something in the software. Is the DJI Avata durable? So I was actually flying my Avata up in a abandoned castle and I actually crashed full force into a wooden beam and the ducks protected the drone amazingly well. As I predicted before in my previous videos, hard plastic ducks and it can definitely withstand more than this one, I would say, definitely stand a crash. So yeah, it's one of the most durable, if not the most durable drones I've ever used. So a definite massive plus when it comes to durability. The noise of the drone. Not gonna lie, it's the worst part of the drone for me. It's really, really loud, but it's not just the loudness factor, like the decibel factor. It's just the high pitch shriekingness of it. I know what you might be thinking or screaming at the screen is it's a Cinewu and none of them are particularly quiet, but it's the high pitch shriek on this particular Cinewu. It actually reminds me of the iFlight Protec 35. Um, and I think it's got something to do with those harder plastic ducts that really just increase the shriek and the high pitchness to the noise. And I'm not gonna lie, when I take off uh, the first time around people, it's quite embarrassing. But you know, it's FPV, so later when you show them the footage, they're like, oh, what? That's not this picture. Oh my God! Wow! Is what it is, is a cine whoop, is loud. They are all loud, but this one in particular is just on another level. 
the battery life performance this for sure has been an absolute godsend i spoke about it in my last video but having flown it now for seven months and i can tell you about my experience of having that extra battery life for example the last place that me and my family stayed in was this amazing tiny house in a beautiful location in the south of wales and it was pretty much completely off grid the only power we had was solar power and no outlets to charge anything except for you know a usb to charge your phone very very slowly so for me that's where having four fully charged dji avata batteries giving me a total of nearly one hour of flight time was absolutely incredible and i just didn't have to worry about charging batteries this to put it in perspective for the same amount of flying time with traditional fpv batteries Without charging, I would have needed three times as many LiPo batteries just to keep up with those four DJI Avata batteries. So that could be like 12 or 13 to get the same amount of flight time. And I must say this has come in very handy for whenever I've had to fly it professionally as well, as it just saves me time swapping out batteries. And quite often when I'm attempting a line, it will take me a few tries to achieve it the way I want. And when I have to land, change battery and reset, I lose the flow of the line. Whereas if I can stay in the air and in my goggles, attempting that same line three, four, even five times without having to land, I achieve it much quicker in my experience so far. And it just allows me to get into that flow state of flying much quicker. I've really enjoyed the form factor of the multi-charger that um, you, know, you have to buy separately, but it's amazing because it's so tiny and it fits into my bag much easier to be able to simultaneously charge four batteries with just a small USB-C cable rather than the big bulky setup that I was used to carrying around with me whenever I wanted to charge batteries and even with that charger I would only be able to charge one or two at a time. I know you might be saying you can multi-charge LiPo batteries as well but I don't really want to try and attempt it because it just looks dangerous. Camera angle change. My favorite feature by far is being able to change the tilt of the camera and therefore the speed of my manual flights whilst staying in the air. It's been so useful so that I can fly in many types of ways without having to constantly come back and land, to change the camera angle if I want to go faster or slower. I'd say this feature in itself is what sets the Avata out in front of all the other FPV Cynic Whips in my opinion and what really makes it worth buying. Turtle mode. If you don't know what this is, um, it's a button you can press to rescue your drone if you've landed upside down. And it's actually much easier to use on the DJI Avata than a traditional FPV drone. As you just press the button once and it does all the work for you. It knows it's not the way it should be and it just flips over till it's in the right position just with one press of a button. Whereas with a traditional FPV drone, you need to set up a switch on your radio to switch it into turtle mode and then by adjusting the throttle stick you need to be kind of pushing yourself over here and there and um, you know sometimes it can be a bit tricky because you're not you can't see where you are you can't see the drone you only see the drone through the goggles so trying to figure out which way to push and stuff has been you know something that's been an issue for me in the past because i've actually burnt out a motor trying to turtle mode myself with a traditional fpv drone Okay, I think one thing I didn't actually talk about in my original video was price of this drone. Isn't it super expensive for an FPV drone? Actually, no, I think I would beg to differ on that. Bind and fly cine whoops from other companies like GEPRC and iFlight with DJI's latest O3 air unit are now costing over $600 US, which it's quite a lot of money for an FPV drone. And that's with the fact that they don't actually include any batteries as well. You've got to buy the batteries separately. The DJI Avata by itself, I've even seen it as low as 350 US dollars or 350 pounds because I'm in the UK without a battery, which is what you get with a traditional bind and fly. And that is pretty mad when you think about what you're getting for that price. Other features I can't really give you much info on are normal mode and sport mode flying. It's an FPV drone, so I always fly in full manual mode. But what I will say is having that normal mode button to just hover in place whilst I talk to a client or adjust my goggles or take a sip of coffee, whatever it might be, is something that I really love. And again, it just doesn't come with regular traditional FPV drones. 
So my overall thoughts, having had this drone now for seven to eight months is that I'm honestly super happy with the drone, which I didn't think I would be when I first started flying it. And it's actually displaced my Shendrone Squirt Cinewoops as my main daily driver, which is taking some doing because, you know, I really love flying those ones, but the ease of use, portability, smart features, and having that extra security have just made it a no-brainer for me. Uh, something that can just cruise through gaps, it does its job. And obviously it goes without saying, it's not really meant for any kind of high-level punch-out freestyling. In my opinion, who do I think should be buying the DJI Avata? I think definitely beginners into FPV without a doubt. I'd say also people that want those FPV type shots but want to be traveling light, which means just going around with one drone. I think it's perfect for those kind of people. I'd also argue it's a drone that can be for professionals and a lot of professionals might laugh at me when I say that, but I think just the battery life and the general safety and reliability that comes with it makes it a good value for money drone for professionals, even if it's not their main, but definitely something that you should have in your kit to take on professional jobs. And who do I think the DJI Avata is not for? Definitely it's not for people that need power in their cine whoops as it's just not powerful at all. And it's definitely not for people that want to be flying a full GoPro on top. I'd say the max that this can take is a naked GoPro or a GoPro Bones, something around that 80 to 100 grams weight. It's also not meant for anyone that's looking to do freestyle with it. Although this comment I got on my last video has intrigued me. It's talking about a kit from a company called Axis and it's been made to upgrade the DJI Avata into something that has more power and can do a little bit of light freestyle well. It's actually something I'm in the middle of currently and I'll put my thoughts out there on whether I was able to achieve this upgrade and my thoughts on it as soon as I'm able to. And guys, if you wanted to know more about the DJI Vata, then go ahead and check this video over here, which was my initial review. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care.